Yo, what's up? This is me, Doc, again. And look, I want to thank you guys for hitting the website and buying the videos. We got another new video. This one's called the MPC 2000 XL, the next level. This video is for the pro. If you haven't got our first video, you won't know what to do. If you got the first video, you will know what to do. If you've been working on MPC for a little while, you want to know more about syncing, how to use it with your Triton, your JV2080, your Trinity, or whatever keyboard you got, this will help you out. This video will help you out totally with MIDI, sync, and also on the best way to use your MPC. Well, we're going to show you some features that actually are in the book, but then some things that aren't in the book also. So. I could talk all day long, but my talk is not going to help you. So it's time to get busy. Let's do this. Now, what's important when using SEMPTI, MTC, or MIDI clock is your tempo. BPMs, beats per minute. Make sure you have the right BPMs that is on your track sheet when dealing with 2-inch or your 8-ax. And make sure you have the right BPM. Also, in your software, if you're using Logic or Pro Tools or um, what is it, a Cubase or whatever's out there, it's important to make sure when you're syncing that you're locked into the right tempo. That's how you do it. Let's get busy. Now, before I record into my computer system onto my mixing board, we got a Pro Edition, which I suggest you get if you want to be a pro. That's what this videotape is all about, the next level. You need to get all your eight outputs. Every track and every sample must correspond. We gotta have a MIDI out and a MIDI in. Locked into our system. Now we want to sync our MPC up with our software or with our uh, slave device. We'll press Shift, Sync. And here we can go Sync In. We can use MIDI Clock. Or MIDI time code. Or it's empty. Okay, now I want to sync out. I want to send a sync out of the MPC to my system. I want to use MIDI clock. Now I want to sync out and use MTC. Now when using MTC, we must set a frame rate. My cursor down. Now the frame rate in Europe is 25 frames per second. But here in America, when recording music, we always use 30 frames per second. And when using SEMPTI, we always use 30 frame rates per second. Now when syncing up, we want to make sure that we can either write SEMPTI or sync up through MTC. Well, we have to set an offset, particularly when using 2-inch um, tape or using 8 ads or D88s. Here's how you do it. You move our cursor, as you can see, to the now, and when I open, the open window. Now you see there, it says beats and bars. And we also see up below there it says start time. I can set my start time in hours, minutes, and seconds. I'll set it to 5 seconds. And you can see here, my frame rate is 30. Okay, now, to record 70, I set my edit up to record on track 8. Input in. I'm ready to record 70. Okay, now I want to set a 70 output to my source. Or to, let's say, an 8 act tape, a D88 tape, or a 2-inch tape, or even out to Pro Tools. Put it in my outsource. I put the other end into the end where I want to record or track or into what system I want to use my SEMPTI. Shift sync. Send my out to SEMPTI out, 30 frames. Press play. Okay, now to receive my SEMPTI time code to my MPC, I'll take out my patch bay here out of here. 
turn my ADAT on and receive my sync. Just right there on track eight. Always record your empty from your last track from your medium. Okay, you can also sync with our MIDI cable using MTC. It's like SEMPTI, except it comes through our MIDI cable. Here's the setup. MIDI cable out. We press Shift, MIDI Sync, and we set our MPC up to send MTC out. Now when you want to send MTC back into your MPC 2000 XL, you get a MIDI cable of course. I'm going to go in. Now we're going to in 1, MIDI input 1. We're going to send MTC directly in to our MPC 2000 XL, and then we'll be able to sync up the MPC with the signal. Well now we've got our MPC locked to uh, my system knows Pro Tools and what I want to do here is uh, run the MPC in sync with my Pro Tools software. I'm going to pull up a status window and here in my status window I can see my 30 frames per second and my current time and my session start which I can use as an offset. I'll press play on my MPC And we can see here the numbers going by. Five seconds, six, seven seconds. And these are frames. Now we're going to do a MIDI setup. We'll take a MIDI cable. We're going to plug it into the output of our keyboard. In this case, a Triton. Now, I'm going to go to our MPC 2000. Now, I'm going to take a MIDI cable and stick it right here into our input on my MPC 2000 XL. Right there. Now, I've got a MIDI in from my keyboard. Now, we'll take the MIDI out from our MPC into our MIDI in on our module. Or, we can send it to a keyboard or a MIDI sequencer. Now I'm going to use the MPC to make up a simple beat. some MIDI information in. Uh, Dave, play the keyboard. See, we got some going on there. We got a little keyboard going on there, right? So now I'm recording some MIDI channel one. You ready? Okay. Try. Two, three, go. Let's see, MIDI channel 3, 
You ready, Dave? Yes. Hey, that was pretty funky, right? Well, we got our program set up, well, several programs for that matter, and I got a little beat I made up there. Well, now I'm going to show you how I made the beat up and how to quantize. I've been getting a lot of email from guys talking about what does quantizing mean, how can I actually get my tracks in tempo, sometimes I put a drum pattern in, it won't work. Well, it's about quantizing. It's about knowing what a quarter note is, what a sixteenth note is, and what a 32nd note is, or a 32nd note triplet, or a 16th note triplet, or a 8th note triplet. Quantizing has to do with, like, for example, you'll hear Timlin do some stuff, but that's the quantizing. He has this machine set to quantize how he plays a beat so it's in sync. And what the machine does is correct. So if any problems happen to happen while I just program the machine, you can correct that because the machine will correctly quantize it in place. Check this out. This is very important to making your tracks fat. Okay, what I got here is a demo sequence. I used the original disc that comes with our video or DVD, which is the MPC 2000 XL demo kit. We load it in, we load it up, we press shift load, and we want to load in demo sounds. We want to load in our demo sequence all file. I've already loaded those in for us. Now I've got a pattern here that I've made up, which you can hear through the entire production actually. And right now I'm going to turn off all these tracks. Since they're already on, I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to turn this off here. And I'm going to go to the Okay now. Let's go back to uh got sounds from pads 7 to pad 16. We've got 10 sounds for this beat. Now the bass drum there. Let me my bass drum sequence. It's already been recorded in. Now I may want to add a hi-hat to this. I could set my timing here to eighth notes, hold down the tap, tempo, note, repeat key, find my hi-hat right there. Hold it down. See that? It repeats it over, it plays it every eighth note. My note, repeat key will do that. I can even go to 16th notes. I don't want that feel though. I'm going to go here to eighth notes. I'll press overdub and record it. Let's put that track on. I have it on already. Now, I'm going to put a snare in. Press record. little beat going on there. That's for my snare tracks. Now I've named another track here, which is our first track, is our beat loop. And our beat loop is right there. That's just one bar. Now that beat has already been tempoed up by me to match this loop for you, so it makes it easier when you're at home. 
You can press though shift program, press drum one, hit this pad, so it says beat there, press parameters, and you can see the tuning field, I've already tuned it to minus 14, which is minus 14 from the original tuning it was when I sampled it in. Back to main screen, I'm going to press step edit now. Now here on the first beat, I want to have that sound play. Let's go back to main screen. And we're going to turn that track on and then press step edit. And right there we have A13. We have our tuning and we have our velocity. I can delete it. Hit the pad, see? It's right there. But this is a two bar sequence. So you can see here it's two bars. So I want to make sure that pad, one, two, three, four, then again. Step at it. I put it on the first beat of the first measure, which is 1-1. One, one. I press this bar. It's also on the second measure on the first beat. Right there. So now I press. I think the loop might be a little bit too loud, so I can press shift mixer while in motion. Press drum one. Move the cursor to where the actual beat's at, which is A13. I'm gonna bring it down. See? I can mix the level of that loop along with the beat I made up. Press main screen, right back where I started from. Now I've added some other sounds here, which is a bass line. And an 808 drum sound. And you might hear it so clearly because it's a very low frequency sound, but it's a really great 808 sound. I'll press stop here. Now for guitar sound. Now this guitar sound is already preset. We'll press shift program and press drum one. Tap my guitar and press params. As you can see in the bottom of params, I've set it to note off. Because that way I can tap it, I get a little bit of the note, or well the full slide guitar pick. Or just either one. By holding the pad down either long or short duration. Go back to main screen. I can just turn that sound on. I already have programmed in here. Solo it. See? Now I'll press overdub play. See how I cut the sound off? I don't like that. Let's undo that. Let's try it again. Now I'm changing my atomic now to 16 notes so it'll quantize properly. My last sound, a couple sounds I have here. I oh, like a vocal, female vocal. No, here you go. Now you can see the overlapping. But in this case, I want to leave it at that one time. I got the male vocal. Program that in. So I made up my sequence. Now here I also have a sax line. It's already pre-programmed. Now how I did that was I pressed 16 levels. I picked my sax sound. Then I put my note variation in of how I wanted it to be. Then turned it on. I'll make my scale up. 
See that? I can play a little musical melody along with the track. Really cool. I already did it, so check it out. We'll move to here, put this to on, and you'll hear it. I want to lower that sax, so I'll press shift mixer, go to drum one, move the cursor A, go in the background of the track. That's how you make a sequence up. So now we want to probably just quantize and give you an idea of how to quantize. Now Dave, uh, play some keyboards. I'm going to quantize in eighth notes. Stop. Hear the mistakes in there? It sort of cut off some notes he was playing. That's the wrong quantize. To quantize, you got to make sure that you get the right timing. What's well, going to be eighth notes, sixteenths, thirty seconds, or 30 second note triplets, or 16 note triplets. You must find out what your keyboard player is playing, or how to quantize your drum beat to the right quantize mode. How to use 16 tracks, rather, excuse me, 16 beats. Try this. Stop. Well, you heard a little mistake in the beginning of it. Now sometimes the keyboard players, I won't even quantize them. I'll turn the quantize off because I want more of a feel of what he's playing. Now this is with no quantize. Here you go. Form so I can quantize without correcting it. But here in the bass line, you know when doing rap or dance or R&B, almost any music, the bass has to be right in the middle of the drums. So we want to quantize the bass line. Here we go. I'm going to do it at 16th notes. That's it. The difference how he played down quantized. So I slowed it down sort of. I'm gonna quantize at a better resolution. We're gonna try 30 second notes right now. Ready day? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. See the quantize, it corrected it, it flubbed it, it find the flubs. It's trying to quantize to the nearest note possible to try and correct it. So now I'm going to do it again. Here we go. See, so the second part, he played a little slower than the first time, as you can hear that. Now, we'll try the 16th note triplets. Same bass line. Now that was 16th note triplets. That's where he played it and the bass line was stored and played back the same way and the same feel he gave it. I have a little drum programming. A lot of guys are wondering how to actually program rhythms up. Let's get a little tempo going on here. Pick my tempo out. Come on. Let's get that for the of that. You 
ginger temper. Let's gonna try like maybe 85. Some, a new track. That's just programming. Now you can also I can go ahead and change my timing. Let's say 30 second. And press my tempo. Got the idea when I press here. I'm gonna go record. Get the new track. I'm gonna press my tempo repeat button first. Repeat, see that? New track. If I don't like that, I can go here. Press erase. Remember that bass drum. I don't like that bass drum where it goes. See? I erase that bass drum. Now, now let's try. That's how you can program your beat. You can always change your timing. In that case, it's a little Timbaland style there, where I went to 30 second notes. I used my tempo repeat, as you can see. And I could switch up with my rhythm pattern by just tapping the sound. I'll just go to solo here, you'll hear it. See that? Programming. Let's see, we had 125 for the bass drum. See, I press my tempo, 
Repeat. Get the key around the head of that. Get a snare. Now that's the timing of 1 16th. And my tempo is 125. I like to add extra drums always. timing, so you can do the right timing correction, and also to know the tempo. Now we have a, a proper timing correction, you can even hit a little bit off. Just a little bit off, you know, not too much on, but correct and put it right where it's supposed to be at. Ah, ah. Two more girls to back her up, that track's fat. All right, we got our MIDI down, we got our synchronizing down. Well, we want to teach you about tips, tips and tricks. Things you gotta know, need to know, need to do when doing your production. You gotta make sure that when you're in a recording session, you can move as fast as possible. Also, techniques on how you can make a drum sound fathom when it actually is. Well, look, I can talk on and on. And you know I can, but hey, we're gonna talk to you, then we're gonna show you. You know, we the sample kings, and nobody does it better, son. We have a sequence. We have a couple loops we're going to use. Now my first loop is an actual loop from a record. I took the same loop and I copied it. I made it bassy. Here's how it works. Press shift program. I press my program one. You'll see that there. That's a beat, that's a copy. Go to parameters. And I've changed the frequency and the resonance of that sample. Now let me go back to 100 here. Hit the sample. That's a 100% frequency. Now add my filter onto it. I'm going to go to like 52. It's a little hollowed out now. Continue my resonance. It almost hollows out. Now here I'll take off most of the bass. You won't even hear those strings in the background. I don't know if you hear this, but now when you're doing this to a sample from a loop, you're gonna get more bass, more drums. You get most of the highs out because it's bottomly dark feel. This is very popular in hip hop. I'm gonna turn up a little bit more where I want to have it at. Go back to my main screen and play my sequence with it. Now also, you can take an 808 kick drum, which I have here on my pads. I'm going to go to Program. I know it's in Program 1. And there it's called 808 Dope Bass. Okay, now I'm going to Parameters. Now here I'm hit the pad again. And on my machine it's pad 14, A14. Now, you can hear almost a little noise, a clip in that sound. So I'm hearing that right here. To get rid of it, it sort of ends and it cuts off with a pop to it. I can lower my frequency. 
That clip is still there. And I'm going to go to, to the attack. I'll keep the attack on, actually. I'm going to go actually to the K. Yeah, that's what I want. And now, see, it dies out now. And we don't have that kind of clipping noise to it. Now, sometimes when you're sampling something, you make it a little noise at the end where there'd be too much power of the sound. And it cuts off abruptly. You can use a decay. And so on the front of it, you can either lower the attack by a hair to get that little clip off the front, or use a decay in the back. And particularly with bass sounds, it's always good to see how the lower frequency works in your track. I'll go back to here and see how my track sounds now. <laughs> That works for me. Another cool feature or even trick to do when actually making up a beat is to use two kicks at once. We call it a double trigger. We'll press shift program, drum one, and I'll, I want to double this kick with another kick from normal to simultaneous play. Now, the kick I want to use and double it with is the one at A14, which is note 55. Look for 55. And they play together. <clears throat> I'm at 55. And now they play together with a combination sound, the 909 kick, along with that 808 playing together at the same time. Give me a stronger kick and a better feel I might want to use in this track. Now a really great thing to do sometimes if you get a chance is to Go through your records or your CDs and pick out little horn parts. Here's one. And try to make it match the loop. It's kind of cool putting some other music on top of music. That's a Dre sounding beat, but that's actually from a record from the actual in the 70s. Now I'm gonna take this actual sample along with this horn sound, try to combine them. I'm going to press uh, Shift, Program, Drum 1, of course, my program's back. We have our horn. And I've got my... Now, that doesn't sound like it's in key to me in pitch. I want to go to Parameters, and I want to tune this up. And I've already set up tuning already, I believe. It should be like about here. That sounds good. That's some key for me. I go back to here. So, track. Brand new track. Now you got the horn playing everywhere. As you can hear the back of that horn. 
there's a boom on the bottom of it. Sometimes when you're tuning something, you want to make sure there's a little beat or drum, it falls in time also. Now, a lot of rap over the years have been using loop, loops and a loop to loop some function out, like a... Now, they might want to pay a royalty to a loop. So what a lot of times I do and some other cats do, we take a kick and a snare and a hi-hat and recreate the loop within the MPC. Or use it as a guide to give my rhythm that kind of beat. My goal here. I'll turn my loop down now. Take my solo off. Now, as you can see, that beat is similar to the beat I just played. I used the beat as a guide, then I made my own beat to go along with the sample loop to give it that kind of like heavy, funky, like almost Dr. Dre feel. It's important to understand how to use loops and how not to use a loop. Now, we're going to show you what we do with our hi-hats, how we can get an open and close hi-hat to cut each other off like a regular drummer would do when playing a drum. So even some most drum machines, it works that way. Press Shift, Program. We'll press Drum 2. And this program, I've put in the Funk Set, which came with my MPC 2000 XL. Now here on pad number 3, 4, seven and eight, you can see we have four different hi-hat sounds. One's a thin, one's an open, a thin, as you can see it says there, but it has something special, a DK switch. And then here, a foot on pad eight. Now what they do in pad seven here is that if you hit this pad very softly, you get the sound. That's the hi-hat thin, as you can see right there in sound. But if you hit over 17, hit it harder, you get pad number four, which is A4, which is the open hi-hat. So that means you hit soft, then hit loud. Or you can hit, so yeah, that sound gets cut off automatically by the hi-hat. This is all set in note variation with our slider. Now another cool feature is that sometimes I got these sounds in here. And they're not loud enough going to tape or recording to a 2 inch or 8 out or a DDA. Here's a cool feature. You're going to go here to setup. And see here we've got our DB level. Which is right here. See that right there? We can increase that, the cursor over, and get a louder level. Or get even louder. Or we get lower. Even lower. This way, the output that you're saying to the tape or the two inch or even into your software, you can adjust it and get this too low or too loud. And that'll adjust your master volume out. Hey, that was a great, great session. Look, it's the end of our video. I just want to make sure you guys understood everything. Um, take your time when doing your production. Always try to get your own flavor. Shoot for your own sound. Get your sound so it's tight. But once you get your sound, then no one can actually take it from you. No matter what track they hear you've done before, your sound has its own flavor to it. And also, we're doing a video right now on the MPC 4000. That's right. We've got one, and we're doing a video on it. It'll be out soon. Always check our website, samplekings.com. You can also get our disc. We've got discs from almost every producer that's been pretty big in over the past maybe six years. Timbaland drum sounds, Primo drum sounds, all the fat stuff. Like I get busy. Guys are coming back in here about to do a production. But one thing's for sure, K 
keep the faith, and always keep making fabulous. I'll check you later. Yo, bring the cat to Hey, what's up? My name is Doc, and I'm one of the Sample Kings. I want to thank you, first of all, for purchasing our videotape. We thank you very much for the support. We hope you enjoyed it, and it was very informative. I got something special for you. Check this out. This is my own personal collection of all my fattest samples. I love it. I got horns, bass drums, hi-hat, snare drums, these are just kicks, here's some cuts, guitars, tons of samples. I use them all over the years, from old school to new school, you name it, I've done it and been there and do more. And I got the new, extra school stuff. Well, I got something for you. What's I got for you? These are our samples. I've taken all my samples made them available for you to get, to purchase in stores, or to even buy from our website at samplekings.com. We also make zip disk. If you get yourself a zip disk drive, you're going to love our zip disk. Now a zip disk can hold up to 70 of these disks. So you know, this disk is power packed. Well look. I want to thank you again. I get back to work. Any problems, just call us at samplekings.com. Alright, baby, let's do it again. The background's a hot one, feel it.